Hello everybody. In this video I will show you a kind of refined and simplified version of my high voltage impulse generator. And to begin with I will show you schematics of how I have built it. It is very simple. We have one bifiler flat coil, one MOSFET or transistor and a signal generator and a power supply here plus and minus. So what this setup basically is doing is the MOSFET or transistor is switching the DC voltage that is applied on and off like an electrical switch and the signal generator is basically the controller that tells the MOSFET when it has to switch. So from the signal generator there is a coming a square wave signal at currently at around 35 to 50 kilohertz depending on what I try to power with. And yeah, we have here gate, drain and source of the MOSFET and to protect the gate we have to use a small resistor. The value isn't that important. Right now I use a 5 ohm resistor, but I've tried with up to 150 ohm, it doesn't really matter what kind of resistor you use, unless it's too high, of course. So let's start with the setup itself. I've already powered it on. So what you can see here is I've connected a sphere. This is a wooden sphere covered with aluminum foils, multiple layers of it. And because aluminum foil, of course, is conductive, we have a metal sphere as our antenna. And this antenna is connected to the drain of the MOSFET, or basically where the outer rim of the bifiler coil is connected. And for the power supply input, I have here my power supply and this is connected to a capacitor. This is a large capacitor of 1.2 farad, but it doesn't need to be that large. It's just a bit of a protection for my power supply because my power supply actually doesn't like these high voltage spikes. So you could also use a smaller capacitor. This one is up to 18 volts. So it doesn't need to be a high voltage capacitor, just high enough for the input voltage. So as you can see here on my power supply, I'm using 11 volts and the power draw, it fluctuates a bit because my display on the power supply is not very accurate, between 0 0.01 and 0 0.03 volts and, uh, sorry, amperes. And this is basically all what it shows always, even when nothing is connected to the power supply. So we basically have no current draw at the moment. But as you can already see on the oscilloscope itself, we have here at the frequency of 35 kilohertz, large voltage spikes of Currently it shows around 1.7 kilovolts peak to peak. Now this is my probe that is not connected to the system. This is just what the probe itself picks up when it lays here. And also I'm using my oscilloscope itself as a function generator. And yeah, this is why I can easily control the frequency and also show it here but you can use a different function generator, of course, it doesn't matter. So what I want to show you here is when I bring my probe closer to the metal sphere, as you can maybe see on the, on the if I'm not covering it, on the oscilloscope, the voltage always goes up if I come closer. And if I would touch it, my power supply would go in a fail mode because it doesn't like to be grounded or the high voltage doesn't want to be grounded. 
and what my oscilloscope does is it shows an yeah basically almost infinite high voltage higher than it can show so what you can see here is 500 volts per division and the maximum peak to peak it can show is 4 kilovolts but if I would directly touch it it would be way higher and yes so what I'm going to do next is I will power some LEDs with it and for this I'm going to remove this metal sphere. First let me turn off the signal generator so it's safe to touch. So I've connected, uh, I've disconnected the metal sphere as an antenna and what I have here now, you have seen this in other videos of mine, this is just a normal copper coil, three turns connected to a ring with 34 1 watt LEDs that are parallel. And the range of the, this wireless power is not very good. Right now you can see nothing because I have to turn the frequency generator on. So as you can see here the range is not very far but it lights up really bright and as you can see my power draw is also not very high. It shows around 0.04 to 0.06 amperes mm -hmm. and because I've used uh, the uh, sphere antenna before I had to change my frequency which would be the resonance frequency of the system itself to around 35 kilohertz. But right now when I remove this antenna the resonant frequency of the system is actually higher. At least it was last time when I did it. <laughs> so I will power it off and on again. Yeah, here we are. I had to adjust the output of the signal generator a bit. And if I do this and go to a frequency of 50 kilohertz, also the output of my uh, power supply goes down. So we fluctuate between 0 0.02 and 0 0.04 amps as an output current to power these LEDs which is very low and also you can see the voltage spikes are shown on the oscilloscope of course this is never the real voltage because this is just picking up from my probe when it's not connected but in this case I connect the probes directly to the LED ring and here you can see the real output on these LEDs. So what we have here are voltage spikes peak to peak of around 1.1 kilovolts and of course if I remove it the voltage goes down and also the LEDs are not lit up anymore so with this kind of an antenna of these three coils the, uh, yeah it's, it's not very far where I can move it away to light the LED still up but when I'm close enough it is very bright and also the power I'm using is really low of course these LEDs are not fully lit up just to tell you and yeah also the signal changed a bit as you can see here we have now multiple spikes yeah and I think this is basically everything I wanted to show you in this video um, if you have any questions 
you can of course ask. Um, I've also shown you the schematics, so I think it's quite easy to rebuild. And yeah, have fun with it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.